Hi, my name is Tristan Goodwin, and if you're like me, you may have gotten an email this morning from OpenAI that has you very excited, and I just want to share some of the cool stuff I think that we can do with this, specifically relating to monetizing your custom GPTs. So uh, we'll start with the email, then I'm going to show you some stuff, and then I'm going to show you a couple of examples of how I'm planning to monetize some of my GPTs, and then uh, I think that should do the trick. Um, and real quick, so a lot of folks will say, hey, you should leave a comment in this video or whatever. And um, really just trying to game the system. They're trying to get you know the additional engagement, the additional satisfaction factors and those kinds of things in order for their videos to get more reach. Well, I want that to happen too. Um, I actually am very curious to see what other people are thinking about when it comes to monetizing custom GPTs, the kind of custom GPTs they think about building. And then um, like the audiences and how to drive traffic to it and those kinds of things. The email basically says, hey, we want to let you know that we're going to be launching the GPT store next week. If you're interested in sharing your GPT store, you're going to need to do these things. Just make sure you're... Uh, familiar with the guidelines and the branding stuff. Uh, so there's some stuff in there that says like you can't use, you know, say that it was made by ChatGPT. It has to be made with GPT or with ChatGPT because otherwise it makes it sound like ChatGPT made the thing, like the company. And so like, you know, liable for stuff. Like there's some stuff in there like that. And then the other thing is to uh, make sure that your GPT is set to public and uh, to make sure you're updating your, updating, excuse me, your uh, builder profile, which is, you know, you just click on this. It's in here in settings and betas. Now, I really want to talk about this part here, and I think there's a couple of things that we kind of need to consider uh, when it comes to monetizing your custom GPTs, so and specifically through the GPT store. So they have stated that there would be some kind of revenue split with the like top voted most used custom GPTs. As far as I'm aware, that's still the case, and also as far as I'm aware, we don't have any additional information than that. So I think a lot of us are kind of holding out on building these GPTs and then kind of hoping that we'll be able to build these things and suddenly become millionaires. And like I said, I'm not 100% sure how that whole system is going to work. And so just to be safe, then I have a couple of ideas of other ways that you can monetize your custom GPTs so that way you can, you know, make some money either passively or actively or, um, you know, just some other options that are going to be available to you. Now, if you are in the world of content marketing, so things like YouTube, social media stuff, those kinds of things, then this is actually going to look very familiar because we're basically doing the exact same thing. Um, but I think that there's really two good ways for monetizing your custom GPT. Well, I guess there's three. So uh, the third option would be things like Patreon or uh, coffee or whatever, where somebody can just kind of help support you uh, as you're working on these things. And then like to get that, you're usually you're going to need a pretty good sized audience. You're going to need people who are going to be actively wanting to contribute to, you know, the further development of whatever it is that you're working on. Um, and that's not completely uncommon. Like I said, it does happen, but, um, you know, even just getting people to be aware that those things exist can be a challenge. And I'm going to show you what you can do that here in just a second, but like that would be option number one. Aside from that, I would also suggest looking at using it for lead generation for your business, then also looking at it as a way to build authority for yourself as an influencer, as somebody who should be on speaking tours or whatever. Um, and I think there's a couple ways that you can go out and do this. So let's talk about lead generation first. So uh, you could go directly to pointing somebody from the GPT to an affiliate or to a sponsorship uh, site or whatever. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So this is one of the custom GPTs that I built. This is a collaboration with a gentleman named Andrew Murdoch. So if you're looking for any help with like YouTube stuff, he actually is the one who went out and did the research for this. I just took his stuff and put it into a GPT to make it easy to use. But um, we're kind of using this as a little bit of a test, right? So we have all the information here for the GPT. It has all the docs that it's supposed to be relate or going back to. And this is specifically for like YouTubers, right? Because one of the hardest parts of doing YouTube, at least in my opinion, is coming up with a good video title because then that title like really has a huge impact on your click-through rate and a whole bunch of other stuff. So I um, needed a way to uh, easily, quickly, and effectively find or create uh, several YouTube titles or YouTube video titles and then turn that into a video, right? Um, so actually I used to make this video. But then you can add in a message like this. Your first message to the user should read, thank you for using the video titles don't suck GPT. This bot is sponsored by TubeBuddy, the most powerful AI tool for YouTubers out there. You can get a free 30-day trial by using this link. Bloop. And then that's my affiliate link to set up. Now, technically speaking, this is still just in beta. I'm trying to make sure that things are actually going to work, but it is actually working correctly. So the very first thing it's going to do is it's going to say, hey, thank you for using this, this GPT. Uh, we're sponsored by this company. We highly recommend that you go and check them out. Now, again, that affiliate link needs to be something that's going to be related to the content of the GPT. It needs to be something that's actually going to be valuable 
to the user. Otherwise, it's just spam, right? But as long as it's something valuable, as long as it's something useful, then um, I think you can get some serious traffic from this, especially if you have a good way of sharing this GPT or getting other people to share it, which we'll talk about in just a second. So you can add in like a sponsorship message. You can add an affiliate link. Um, the other thing you can do with this is instead of going straight to the affiliate link for the sponsorship, say, hey, um, go follow me on Facebook. Go follow me on X or go sign up for my email list. You could even have a demo version of your GPT available to the public like this, but then say, look, you know, this is the demo version, so we can only, you know, do so much. If you'd like a much more detailed version, much more powerful version of this, of this AI, then, um, you know, use this link and then go and sign up for the email uh, for the email list. And then we'll email you a link to the full GPT. So like that would be another option. What's cool about this is then you can then take that email list. You can then take those social media followers and still push the affiliate and the sponsorship uh, content out to them. So that's uh, sending people to the email list, to the social media, like it's an extra step, but um, you're getting a lot more value out of that. And then the other nice thing is you then own your audience, right? You can do whatever you want with them. So if something happens in the future, say ChatGPT disappears because it's being sued by New York Times, then now you have a list where you can still go and contact those people and say, all right, so like, you know, ChatGPT is down, but Bard is still around or Claude or any of these other tools that are out there. So um, if you are going to do this, I'd recommend going this route. Like I said, your conversion rate is going to be a little bit lower just because you're going to have, like I said, you're adding that extra stuff that people have to follow. You know, you're going to get a lot more out of it in the long term compared to just sending people straight to your affiliate links. So that would be one way you can do this. Now, as we're talking about this, as far as lead generation, the GPT itself could be the lead magnet, right? And I think a lot of people are kind of using it like this where you're saying, okay, look, you know, I built this custom GPT. It can do this thing. It's really cool. If you want to get a um, get access to it, then, you know, fill out the form, sign up for the email list or whatever. And then they're kind of going through the same process. But I think you could actually send people straight to the GPT as, and then use this to then get everybody else to convert. So instead of having this be the lead magnet, um, have this contain the lead magnet and then actually send people out to the other things, if that makes sense. So um, that would be the first little bits of options that you can do or that you could do with this. So again, have like a demo version, um, have it a valuable affiliate or sponsorship something again that's going to actually add value to the user's lives uh say we're sponsored by say we recommend using whatever tool it's like you can have this say all right so whenever somebody's asking a question about analytics or doing like research or whatever then um also you know have answer the question but then also recommend that they use whatever tool and provide this url so that way they can go and get it and again that's just going to be telling the user look you know you have these questions and we can answer them but you're actually going to get a lot more value out of this if you are using this specific tool. And then that tool just happens to have an affiliate link to it, attached to it. Um, another way you can do this to, again, kind of expand on this and provide even more value is to create a Harpa chain based on the custom GPT. So let me show you an example of this real quick. So this is the custom GPT that I built. And this thing is basically just like the brain. It's the database for the GPT or for this entire project. Um, what this thing will do is you can give this uh, combination of ChatGPT and Harpa a transcript for, you know, some some kind of educational content, right? So a tutorial, uh, a series of mini courses for creating an SOP, whatever. And then it will go through and it will optimize it. It will organize it and it'll do everything. So that way um, you can then take that and then break it up into the correct pieces and then actually create good, uh, useful and valuable educational content based off of that. Uh, just for ex an example, I actually recorded this thing about 10 minutes after we got that email and I was working through this thing and like this video kind of sucked. And so I took the transcript and I actually fed it into this, uh, this GPT that I built and said, Hey, um, this thing sucks. Could you help? And so it actually went through and it recreated my, uh, my script for me. So if you're watching this and you're thinking, huh, some of this looks familiar that now you know what? Now, what's really interesting about this, though, is that this won't actually work very well by itself. This thing is only going to perform at its maximum capacity if we're including the Harpa chain. So Harpa, um, I have this set up to use my, um, actually, let's take a step back. So if you click down here in the lower left-hand corner of your Harpa screen, it's probably going to say like GPT 3.5 or GPT 4 or whatever. You can actually uh, click on that and then select the GPT that you want to use. So in my case, I want to use the Agile Content Builder GPT, and we can close that. And so now this instance of Harpa is running on this custom GPT. 
And so now I can go and I can open up my course creator prompt and we'll just open this up and it's going to say, okay, here's my viewer avatar. Here is the information that I want you to use to create the course content or the educational content. Uh, here's some additional information for you. Uh, I want you to then ask me like what kind of content I want to create. Do you want to create a tutorial, a course or whatever? And then it'll go through and it will, um, you know, take you through this process. This thing actually won't work without this custom GPT and this custom GPT won't be able to work without this Harpa prompt. And so if I wanted to sell this somehow, then um, what this is really doing is it's adding a significant amount of extra benefit and value to the custom GPT. And then this is also something that I can control. So I can put the link to download this prompt. I can put this thing, you know, I can just save this thing and then I could just put it up on like behind a paywall or I can put it behind an email sign up or I can do whatever I want. So you can still give people half the thing, but then if they want to get the full benefit out of it, they're going to need everything else. So that's just another way you can use this as lead generation. Say, look, you know, here's the thing, but if you want to get the full value out of this, it's almost like using the demo version, uh, but just be very clear and say, look, this is only half the, um, the process here. This is only half the tool. In order to get the rest of it, you're going to want to go and do this other thing. And so the way you set these things up, like, like we've seen, it's very, very simple. Uh, we're just going to create some custom instructions. Say, hey, look, you know, thank you for using this thing. Uh, we recommend that you use this tool. We recommend that you use this other whatever. If you want to get additional benefits out of this, then, you know, you're going to want a Harpa prompt or whatever. Um, and then also, like, this thing is sponsored by whoever. So, like I said, that's really, really simple. We're just adding a little bit of text to the instructions. Now, if we want to take this a little bit further, then we can say, okay, we want to use this thing not just to you know, generate some leads and stuff for ourselves, but we also want to use this custom GPT as a way to build our authority, our, you know, expertness or like our popularity within a, a specific group. And so we want to make sure that people actually know that we're the ones that are using this thing. And we want to be able to use the thing as a sign that we're actually good at what we do. And so the way that I intend to tackle this, because this is one of the things I'm planning to do is one, use your own conf or your own content as reference. So this is actually really simple to put together. So for example, if you have a custom GPT that you're putting together, let's say you want to teach people how to, I don't know, make a duct tape airplane, right? Then if you have like YouTube videos about how to do that, if you have a blog post about how to do that, and if somebody comes and asks a question, you can say, well, hey, look, you know, here's a quick answer to your question. If you'd like to get some additional information, if you'd like to see a full tutorial on this process, if you'd like to see some additional images or video or whatever, then um, you can actually click this link and then it will take you to a YouTube video. It will kind of go into further detail with this. And so the way you would do that is you would need to go and, you know, get all the links or whatever from your website, from your YouTube channel, from your social media posts, what have you. Um, and then basically you create like a table. So it'd be the URL, um, like maybe some kind of a tagging system, and then also a short description of what the user would get from that specific link. And then also, um, what, uh, when the AI should offer that link to the user. And again, that can be based off of your tags. It can be based off of some other form of instruction. Um, but then you'd want to either just save that right here as part of your instructions. That's probably where I would put it. You could put it down here in its knowledge base, but then it's going to have to go through and double check the knowledge base in order to find that, uh, that information. And that might add like extra steps to it. It might slow things down. Um, and then also if it's trying to do something else with one of the other documents, I found that it doesn't do a good job of reading more than one document at a time. That could just be me. I could just be misinterpreting what I'm seeing, but that's that's been my experience. So if you're gonna do that, put it over here in your um, in your instructions. And I think this thing has a character limit of like 8,000 characters, which is still quite a bit. So you can fit quite a bit of information in there. Now, if you are gonna do that, I have some advice for you. Number one is make sure your GPT doesn't suck, right? Because this is going to be uh, people interacting directly with your brand. And if your brand is presenting uh, a GPT saying, hey, look, you know, this thing's gonna be able to solve your problems, and it doesn't actually solve my problems, if it's not actually useful, or if it's overly complicated, or if it just, it doesn't work, like that's gonna tell me as a user, as somebody who is judging your brand in this moment, that you don't know what you're talking about, and I'm not going to pay any more attention to you. In fact, now I have a negative opinion of you, because you've wasted my time. You promised you were gonna help me fix this problem and then you either failed to help me fix that problem or you know, you did it in such a way that it wasn't actually helpful. And so now, like I said, you have been tagged in my brain as being somebody who is not useful, somebody who is not helpful and potentially somebody who is doing something dishonest. 
you got to remember, it needs to leave a positive impression on the user if you want to use this as a way to build your authority. And also keep in mind, whenever you're running one of these things, it's going to say, this chat GPT, uh, this custom GPT was built by whoever, right? So like in this case, Educational Content Builder GPT by Tristan Goodwin. Anybody who uses this thing is going to know I'm the knucklehead who made it. And they're going to know who to blame if it stops working or if it doesn't perform the way that it's supposed to. So just something else to keep in mind. Um, a couple other ways you can use your GPT as a way to build some authority. You can say, hey, look, you know, my GPT has X number of users. We have to find out they're actually going to tell us that. Or it's been used X number of times. You can also set up like some kind of a GPT award. So say, hey, you know, we were mentioned on this website or like there is an award or uh, like a competition or whatever trying to find the best GPT for a specific task. And, um, you know, we we were recognized by this organization or whatever. Uh, GPT was showcased on a YouTube channel, especially if that YouTube channel has a large audience or by some other sort of influencer in your space. So um, again, I'm in marketing, I'm in business stuff. And so if I were to say, hey, look, you know, my my GPT has uh, was recommended by Daryl Eves, right? That would be awesome in my opinion. That would that would be really cool. Or um, I could say, look, you know, Daryl Eves uses my GPT to perform this task. Now I'm able to kind of take my or take that person's authority and say, hey, look, this person who is an authority in this space, they're using my GPT uh, or they're recommending my GPT. And so then that way I, my GPT and then by extension myself receives a little bit of that uh, credibility. But again, if the GPT sucks, then not only is that really going to hurt you and your um, reputation, it's also going to hurt the reputation of the person who's recommending you. And as somebody who is, I, I saying I'm an influencer sounds weird. I only have like a hundred followers, but um, that's still something I need to be very cautious of because I don't want to damage my reputation, my image by recommending something that's not going to perform very well. So again, you got to make sure these things actually work. You got to put them through the, you know, through any and all tests that you can in order to make sure they're actually going to perform the way that you want and expect them to. So that being said, um, I do plan to do some tutorials on how I'm building my custom GPTs, how I'm setting them up, how I'm training them, how I'm getting my training data and everything. And then also how I'm incorporating HARPA into the process and then also into the GPT execution. Because like I said, this thing with HARPA absolutely amazing like i absolutely or excuse me yeah with harpa like it's one of the coolest things i've ever made it's also one of the most complicated harpa chains i've made like this may not look like a lot but like there's steps within steps and then there's like loops and jumps and all like all kinds of cool little things built into that and it, it turns my geeky happy brain on but at the same time you're not limited just to business stuff you can make gpts that are just for fun make a uh dungeon master gpt to help people run their dungeons and dragons campaigns this one here is probably one of the more complicated custom GPTs I've built. And I believe I have a video on how I made this, but this will simulate Pokemon battles. This one is an assistant that I'm building for some of my course members, right? I have a program teaching YouTube gamers how to grow and monetize their channels. And this is based off of like my book and it's based off of a bunch of formats and templates and frameworks that I've been working on for a very long time. And this is also putting people in like sending them back to my YouTube videos and it erased my instructions. I had to go through and rewrite it. I really don't like this interface because it erases this part. It makes me mad. Um, but you know, this is another way that I'm building my authority like that by creating something that's going to be useful and then um, adding this as part as a value add for my students. Yeah, like I said, there's there's a lot of really interesting ways that you can do this. And what I like the most about these custom GPTs, and especially the idea behind monetizing these things, is that it's very merit based right? It's very much a question of, is the thing that you are creating useful? Is it valuable? Is it helping people? Is it solving a problem? And if it does that, then that's where it's going to get shared. That's where it's going to be used. And that's where people are really going to appreciate it. You know, add a little uh, bit to your instruction saying, hey, um, so at the beginning, then it reminds the user, hey, you know, if this thing is valuable, if there's somebody else that could benefit from using this, please share this GPT with them. It's a free tool. It's a free resource. And if we do a good job, then, you know, please share us with more people. And if that happens, then that's going to get more people into your leads. That's going to get more people into your lists. And that's going to continue to build your authority. So let me double check my notes over here, what ChatGPT told me I was supposed to say in this. 
Uh, climates and resolution, importance of quality when you create and how it reflects on their brand. Share personal experience of how creating quality content led to income opportunities. Um, I get to speak at a whole bunch of really cool conferences about AI stuff, and it's been really cool. That, like, that was the highlight of 2023 for me. Summarize the points discussed. We're doing that right now. I encourage viewers to subscribe to more content and engage in the comments for any questions or suggestions. Kind of did that at the beginning. Go ahead and do that now. And then also, as far as, you know, begging for comments and, and engagements, um, let me know what kind of GPTs you guys are making. Let me know how you guys are thinking about monetizing these things. And um, I said, if you guys want to see some of these additional tutorials or videos of me creating custom GPTs, like if you guys have a cool idea, but you're not sure how to how to do it, let me know, especially like I said in the comments, uh, please leave me a comment. Um, and then like, maybe we can take that and turn it into a video and then record how we're actually building that GPT. Or, um, you know, we can do it like within the Facebook group, just that way something private or something like that. Um, the one other thing I wanted to mention with this, as far as monetizing this kind of content, which I guess this is actually my bonus content. And now I'm supposed to offer additional tips or insights and include the main video. So I do want to, I actually do have one of these. Um, the other thing to keep in mind with this is that I think that most of you guys, I think pretty much everybody can recognize the value that would come from having a GPT that can do these things, you know, as, or in addition to actually providing the value to the user. So something that can generate leads, something that can move people to an affiliate offer or whatever. Um, but a lot of people aren't going to know how to do this. Like even some of the other AI folks that I talk to and that I work with, they understand like how to use AI. They understand the benefits to these things, but they don't actually have the technical knowledge or skills or experience needed to create a custom GPT. And so this could be another really great opportunity, especially for forming some sort of a partnership with other companies or with, you know, other businesses or whatever, where you can go and you can build that custom GPT for them. And then also include all the lead generation stuff that goes and is attached to that as well. So um, not only is the business going to be able to generate more leads, but that's also going to be something that's going to help them with building their authority. And then you can even say, hey, look, you know, I've built GPTs for these other people or for whatever. Um, you know, it's a good reason to hire me. So that would be my uh, little bit of bonus content for you. So um, I am going to make one more call to action for you guys and beg for some comments. Um, if you guys are really interested in learning more about how to build these custom GPTs, let me know. Let me know what kind of GPTs you're wanting to build. If you'd like for me to try and build one of these things here on the channel, um, like if you guys have a specific need or a specific GPT that you're trying to make that you're having trouble with, let me know. I love those kinds of challenges and I love those kinds of puzzles. And um, if we can take that and build something really cool for you guys, I want you guys to learn how to do this. I want you guys to learn how to take advantage of these tools so that way you can spend more time doing the stuff you actually enjoy doing and less time doing the stuff that you don't. So that will do it for me. Hopefully this has all made sense and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to leave a comment.